Hello, Terry Britton here, and as you can hear, I've got a bit of a reverb going on. And what these are, these are VST, VST um, plugins that I've got voice meter sending my microphone input through as an insert pre-fader, sending it to this input here through three VST plugins out here and back in pre-fader into the fader and out of the fader out the B1 which is your uh, your first voice meter virtual output your main virtual output and into the recording now this is all in line it is happening all from one thing you see I have nothing else turned on no other buttons are lit anywhere Everything's in normal mode, and we're just uh, coming in, bringing that microphone in, running it through a chain of processors, out again into the fader and out to the recording, okay? With no feedback loops or anything. And so this is a pretty complex setup, and, but not really. So, okay, the secret magic of all of this is here in the system settings, and... It's right here, that insert mode right there, okay? So I'm going to take off the insert mode. There you go. Now you can hear me just straight, okay? This is what I sound like just straight. And we're going to remove all of this stuff so we can start from scratch. So I'm going to delete selected objects. And this is what you get the mini host modular system as it comes out of the box pretty much, all right? Now, now that you've seen that, you see that now I'm just coming in microphone and going out to B1. Okay, I'm going to go in here to the menu and set up the system settings that you will need to see. One of them is the buffer. 1024 is a bit high. It was a lot of delay, uh, about 20 millisecond delay. If I set it to 480, it's still not milliseconds, but it's better. Okay, uh, and that is what the same, the, even though it says MME, this will be what the ASIO picks up as its output. So whatever the out A1 main device, whatever it's set to, 441 buffer 480, that's what the ASIO will track over here on this side. But these are the inserts, there's 22 of them. Two stereo here for hardware input one, two stereo here for hardware input two, Stereo here for hardware input three. Stereo pair here and here for virtual input. Okay, the main virtual input, but there's actually eight possible inputs to that slider. And likewise for the aux virtual input, left and right stereo plus six more for a total of eight inputs that can come into this slider. Okay, and eight inserts that come out that can come out of it by you selecting this. And so you come in with eight inputs. You can go out with eight inputs into here, into various processing devices. And so, all right. So now we've got this. You've seen how to set this. Set it to the lowest thing you can set at. Set it at without getting clicking. Set your 44.1. Set the preferred sample rate to the same thing that you've got. Uh, for all of your playback and recording devices. So basically you go in, go to advanced, set them all to be the same. So if you're starting with 44.1, if that's your preference, set everything to 44.1. You'll, you won't have to deal with um, uh, sample rate conversions in the system while you're trying to work this way. Or if you're going to go with 48K, then change everything to 48. That's my recommendation. And that's, that's here and in the recording side, too. You do the same thing in here. Oh, not line in. It's not even hooked up. But like here's my headset. And so there you go. So see, I could set it all to 48, but I got it at 16 now. At 1644 one. Okay, so that's important setup stuff. Now, let's go ahead and set up this thing. Here it is out of the box. The first thing you'll have to do is go to Preferences. Set this to ASIO, A-S-I-O, okay? 
And then this slider will show your SEO devices. You want the voice meter insert virtual ASIO, okay, for this for this use. Set it to 441, which is what you've set everything else to, or if you have it set to 48, set it all to 48. And this is already set, as you can see, to the same 480 that we set over here, and it picks up that setting. Uh, you can go ahead and search for your uh, MIDI devices and add some MIDI devices if you want to play with some virtual instruments with this later, but that's not, nothing to do with this program now. Now uh, add some folders that you've got plugins in. If you've got some VST plugins, there's several free plugins on the internet that you can uh, take advantage of. You hit the browse button and you go find the folder. You can add a bunch of folders here, okay? Where you put your flow. Th and then once you have that, the folder selected, hit scan and verify. It will find all the um, all the VST plugins that will work. Well, I think it finds more than just VST also. It shows you the format, 64, 32, etc. And so as you can see, it found all of mine. So again, find your things and you set this to voice meter insert. That's the big deal right there. Now you've got these two. Now, since we're going to use the hardware input one, that corresponds with, in here, that corresponds with hardware I.O. one in stereo. Okay, so set that hardware I.O. and stereo. And then this one, and these two are already here. And this side, number one, stereo again. Okay, now since we're just going to turn everything on, I'm going to just connect these two. What's going to happen now when I click this insert, these inserts on, it's going to take before the fader my heart, my microphone, pre-fader, send it to here, send it back out again before the fader and into the fader and out to the recording. So you hear the left disappear for a second, I believe. There, there you go. Okay, so now what it's done is it's grabbed the signal, sent it out to here, and brought it back in again and put it into the fader and out it goes to the recording. Got it? So if I was doing it with hardware input 2 and turning these on, then in this input here, I would have selected 3 uh, and also selected the output to be 3. If it was hardware input 3, I would select 5 because it's going to be 5 and 6 and hit stereo. If it was the virtual uh, input, I would hit number 7 because that will cover it with stereo and that'll cover 7 and 8. But you also have all the way up to 14 with that. And then if I was going to do the aux virtual input, I would use 15 it was a stereo and that covers 15, 16. But you have all the way up to 22 for inputs that that will work with. Okay. All right, so now that I've got that, that going on and you can hear it and I've got my two inserts turned on but we still don't have any devices plugged in okay uh, so let's go ahead and get a device we'll go here and add a plug-in and I'll add the um, I'll add a compressor first there we go so I got a compressor in the system and make sure you can see it but it's not hooked up to anything yet Okay, well, I'll go ahead and add my others too. Add plugin. Uh, there we go. I want to make sure, make sure you're seeing things. And now I'll get the gate. I'll put that down here. And I'll go get my reverb. And there's the reverb. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I'll set it to uh, uh, default, I guess. Or a uh, medium squeeze. How's that sound? And this thing I'll set to uh, soft gate. There we have it. Uh, with a little bit softer attack time. And this I'll turn up the mix, increase the size, get the free filter down, add some air. All right, now let's hook these guys up. So I'm going to drag from here, connect to that. You see how these are hooked up? And you see the meters working right away. Now I'll hook this to this. See, I'm daisy chaining these together. Now you see those meters working. Okay? And uh, 
Now I'll hook this to this and we see the reverb is getting signal and out I go and now you can hear it. So now let's go ahead and remove that connection and now you hear just the pure, day, the pure chain of things going through. Okay? And so isn't that cool? You have some gating going on. So even though it's cutting to silence and getting rid of the background noise, you have ambiance. Well, I know, it's way too much ambiance. I'm pulling it down. All right, there we go. How's that? A little better? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I like it a little, little, uh, a little lighter. There we go. Uh -huh. Okay, so now you're going to have to put up with me with some echo and uh, stuff like that. I think it's cutting a little bit too hard there. Okay, well, <laughs> um, it, it can be hard to get rid of things like clicks and stuff like that. So I don't know, you know, what to tell you. Um, in fact, let me get a drink of water here. <laughs> okay. So again, if you were going to have something coming in Hardware 2 or Hardware 3, you would click here, you'd add a node, or you'd already have a node for input. And hardware 3 would be the 5, correct? And stereo, and, and that would bring in something from this input here if I had something plugged in. I don't think I have anything to plug in. So... Uh, uh, likewise, if I was going to get it from this output here, I would, you know, get it from uh, 7. And then I'd have my out also, my output node also set to 7. And that would make anything coming in here uh, go through through a loop. So let me, let me see, I'll, uh, I'll play a... Uh, Play another video. Um. <laughs> oh, it can't. It can't do it because I'm recording and it's, it's taking the uh, the signal stuff. So anyway, <laughs> but if I did have something going on, you'd be able to hear it through there. Uh, I wonder if I can maybe. Well, I don't. On YouTube, I don't dare play any music. Okay, uh, so close that. All right, but you're getting the idea. I, I can run things through these different devices and uh, I can add nodes, input and output nodes. I can add plugins and get quite a bit of action here. And I've got a whole ton of inserts to play with. I've only played with the first two, but I have a lot of inserts. So that, Every one of these inserts can have a separate input and output node with a separate string of presets uh, of VST plugins all plugged into them. And remember, they all act independent of each other, so you can make a whole bunch of strings using the same devices. Okay, so well, there you have it. That's uh, your basics. Now, how do you get this unit, this, this FL Studio uh, unit here? Let's go ahead and go get it. Let's, it's called Mini Host Modular Download. If you cl click that in, under Image Line, click on that. In mine, that's what it says. This is the actual manual, but uh, we're going to click on User Forum here. See if you see that. Yeah, User Forum here. And that takes us over to where you log in. Now, let me show you, actually. Let me redo this log out and go back to the User Forum. I want you to see the login uh, screen. And there it is, under create account, you want to create an account because you have to be able to log in in order to get this stuff. And you can sign in with Facebook, Google, or SoundCloud, make it faster. And so, uh, so then you click on this, it takes you to the forum, which you want to Hang on to this, uh, keep it around, because you probably have some more questions. But this top link here, Welcome to the Minihost Modular Forum, that is the one that you want to click, because that has the rest of the links we need. Then you have the installer is available from the public beta forum. The manual this links to is actually this first page that we went to. Okay, so go to the public beta forum and watch the movie, of course.
And there is your download link. It's got the 32-bit and the 64-bit versions of the software. I installed both. You can use both. You may have some 32-bit plugins or 64. There's some 32-bit that don't work with the 64-bit software. I don't know. And there is an OS X installer, as you see. Uh, so even though it won't work, there's no voice meter for OS X still. This has got a standalone and a VST and AU uh, plug-in capability. So it can be used by your logic, audio, and stuff like that in a Mac. I'm going to be doing some videos showing how to use the rest of those inputs from the virtual, uh, virtual outputs and with a DAW. So stay tuned for that, but that's later. So go ahead and install this stuff. I'm going to put into the description, I've got this little bit of uh, info right here. Uh, what I just told you about the insert channels and what they relate to is right in here. So I'm going to paste that into the description for this video. And so I'll go ahead and tone that thing down and uh, turn this off and turn this thing off. And uh, now you hear it just straight the way it was. In fact, turn that off too. And so now this, you just got straight out, correct? <laughs> Oh, gee, I like, a, I like a little bit of ambience. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But now you get the idea that you've got all this capability and can really go to town with your plugins. I'm sure you have a whole bunch of more plugins. And you really use up on the capability of this thing now that you realize that this thing has insert ability, okay, to use with your VST plugins collection. Okay, well, if you have any questions, please do ask in the comments or those reading the, uh, watching the video on Google+. Uh, please go ahead and ask any questions you want. I usually answer them about the same day. And uh, also, uh, don't forget this voice meter is donationware. So please do make a donation anywhere. If you really start using this thing, come on, it's worth 15 to $35 or so, wouldn't you say? I would say. And make a donation, make some videos to support it. Do like I'm doing. Make some videos to show people how to do stuff. If you discover anything that I've never heard of, please make sure you communicate with me <laughs> through the comments or somewhere that you've made a video or figured out something else cool that you can do with it. Or if you want to learn how to do something else with it, that I haven't shown or don't have videos of, go ahead and ask. I'll make a video about anything. I love making how-to videos and helping people out with this stuff. So, so go ahead and get in touch. Keep in touch, and uh, I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all later. Take care. <laughs>